Hi, my name is Kern and I post HomeRecordingWeekly.com and today I'm doing a quick video. Um, this is going to be the first in a series of two videos. I wanted you guys to quickly see where it is that I record, what kind of gear I use, and uh, actually provide you guys with the links to some of this gear. Um, if, not so you can buy it, but maybe if you, if you think it's a good idea, you definitely want to check it out. It's going to be a home recording weekly. If you look, wherever you're watching this video, there's going to be a link. Um, go ahead and click on that link and it should take you right over to the website. Um, I'm going to actually start over here. And you guys will notice this is just a three-walled recording space. And I'm going to get uh, more to that in my next video. Um, so anyhow, the sound is kind of unique and different. And I'm going to show you guys what I did to make it just really, really um, just the way I want it. Um, first, I got the VHT guitar amp over here. It's the Special 6 Ultra. I really like it. It's a tube amp. Uh, great for recording. It's 6 watts. Uh, it has a power attenuation system on it to turn it down uh, in wattage, not sound or tone. And uh, it has an effects loop. And it's a tube amp. All of this is great. But what I wanted to bring to your attention is the amp stand. Um, my hardwood floors, I'm afraid, would take tone away from this amp. Uh, you know, the speaker gets vibrating and f the floor in the house would, uh, would literally take tone from the amp. Uh, as well as, once the floor gets vibrating, it's adding tone to the amp, uh, and that's not what I want to record. Uh, another couple good reasons I use an amp stand is when I stand up and play, I can easily make my adjustments to the amp. Uh, as I stand up and it's so much easier to record. I put a microphone on a stand and I just drop it in front. No more bending over. So yeah, uh, links to this stuff, the amp, the stand, all of it will be on the website. I mean it's a four, less than $400 amp too and, and it sounds great. Uh, the acoustic treatment that you see will be discussed in the next video. It's going to be all about the acoustic treatment so I'm not going to pay too much attention to that right now. That's the big light I stuck in here so I can make this video. Uh, that's my 1980s CBS era Fender Lead 2 guitar that I just love. Uh, I've replaced the pickups in it. Uh, I think it's fantastic. So, you guys, if you're not aware, I have a podcast, Home Recording Weekly. Um, I'm over on iTunes and can be found at the website on if you pick, click on the podcast category. And I use my Electro Voice RE20 um, microphone when I do the podcast. It's a dynamic mic. Um, good for, for uh, broadcast stuff because it doesn't have that much of a proxy effect. And uh, being a dynamic, you don't get too many pops and mouth sounds and things like that. I have it permanently mounted to my desk with this nice little boom arm. And I'm a happy camper when I use it. Uh, I use KRK8s, Rocket 8s for monitoring. I love those speakers. That's what I use for my recording, mixing, mastering. And I have the KNS 8400 headphones, uh, again by KRK, that I just adore. Um, my focus is probably not that good right now. So there is that. I'm sorry about my focus on the microphone. There is that. I am actually putting a rack together right now. I plan on doing some live recording in the near future of bands and I just am getting a rack together. Um, that silver piece with the green light flashing is my interface for recording here at the house and on the road I guess as it were. Uh, it's the Personas Fire Studio. It's an 8 input. It has 8 preamps. I love it. It's um, Firewire. Can't say enough good about it. Um, that's a voltage regulator or power distribution system above it by Furman. And that is my Mackie mixer that I use when I make videos and podcasts and things like that. Uh, you know, I have to bring my DAW, my uh, Studio One is right here. Uh, right now I'm recording my audio for this video. But usually, you know, and it all ties together usually through the Mackie uh, into the Fire Studio, into my computer, which is mounted down here. And that's where I keep my microphones in those cases. Um, I'm wearing a lapel mic right now. 
Uh, the fader port I just got from my friend Johnny Gibb over at Home Studio Trainer. There's a link for him going to be on this video post as well. But for some reason it's not working with my Windows uh, Vista uh, version 7. I'm really, really upset about that. But what can you do? Um, a fun note, I uh, also am a wood carver and a photographer, amateur wood carver. So many of you might remember the old logo, Home Recording Weekly. Uh, and I changed it because no one else knew. I don't know if you can see it, but that's a moy right here, for, you know, Easter Island head moy. But uh, one of my first wood carvings was a moy, and that's where the logo was or where the logo came from. But my brother in law, Scott, uh, from Weekly Photo Tips, said no one else knew that. Let me show you a couple others. Um, so I decided to change my logo for the better. There's another carving here as well, the kitty cat. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's fun. Uh, that's what we do with long cold winters here where I live in Maine. Um, I'm going to be putting some sounds up real soon of this. I wanted to show you guys this. This is a condenser microphone. It's a pencil condenser, and it's actually made from a 12-gauge shotgun shell. Um, it's actually called 12-gauge uh, microphones. They're on eBay. They have a website. You know, for $50 delivered... I got a really nice pencil condenser microphone. Uh, it's 45 volt, uh, 48 volt phantom power. Of course, it's a condenser. It really sounds good on guitar, uh, acoustic guitar, things like that. Um, for electric guitar, if I don't use an SM57, recently I've been using the E609. Uh, Sennheiser makes it. It's the silver side. That's the business side. But uh, really like this for the VHT. It sounds great. Um, you know, in a lot of my music, all the way up till just recently, I've used this AKG Perception 220. It's a large diaphragm condenser, but it has a bass roll-off, if you can see it right there. I mean, a, a high pass and a 20 dB pad on it. And I use that for everything up until just recently because my friend uh, Rob Carew, who you heard on Home Recording Weekly's podcast, hooked me up with the uh, Advanced Audio FET-47 gosh, 47 large diaphragm. Actually, it's a dual large diaphragm. So this baby goes in Omni. It goes in Cardioid, as you can tell. Uh, it's got a 10 dB decibel pad there, 10 dB pad. Large diaphragm, kind of a nice shock mount. This mic is gorgeous and I'm liking it. So I've got a single monitor set up for now. Um, I like it, it works. And then over here for all things MIDI, I have my keyboard. It's a full size keyboard, 88 weighted key, and it's an old one, the old SL880 um, Pro. Uh, Studio, who makes it? Studio Logic makes it. And again, it's an old one, but I really like it. It's never let me down. I like the feel of it. Uh, so if you guys have ever wondered where Home Recording Weekly comes from, this big mess right here is where the magic happens. And again, the next video, I will go over all of the acoustics for this room, what I did to make it, uh, to make it at least sound as good as I could make it. Um, you know, I got a hardwood floor, and I have a drop ceiling, drop tile ceiling, and um, yeah, I actually have a window over here. You'll see there's a um, absorber behind the window there, and there's a few behind the monitors. But we'll, we'll get into that next time. So from home, uh, from my little studio here, thank you guys for checking it out. Head over to HomeRecordingWeekly.com. Uh, and uh, type in the box studio tour in the search box and you'll be uh, brought to this page where you can check out all of this stuff that I've talked about today and uh, go ahead and subscribe and that way you'll never miss another video thank you guys for checking out my stuff